All right, so another title for this uh, might be No More Assembly Language right, for the session. Um, tie, pie, teal, and teal, as we saw, are great. You know, some might feel unfamiliar, it's complex, many arguments, and to be honest with you, the biggest one for me feels like I'm going back in time. I started my career out with assembly language, and uh, here I am getting in the twilight years, and uh, geez, I'm back to, to, you know, assembly language again. So that doesn't feel quite right to me, I don't know. Um, so there's some hope, right? Because Beaker will facilitate that. It's a higher level approach. A lot of the stuff's built right in. You don't have to get involved with assembly language. So uh, I'm all over this. I think it's a great, um, a great, great approach to doing this. And um, we also have um, Beaker available now for uh, TypeScript, you know, JavaScript. Uh, we got Python. What is Beaker? All right, getting into Beaker then. So what we got here is a Web2 uh, typical app architecture where you have the front end, the web server, and a database. We're all familiar with this, and uh, you know this really started out being you know client server type programming, uh, separation concerns, um, end tier architecture, you name it. But this is basically the flow. And now with DAPT, um, the Algorand DAPT architecture, you can see here we got a few things added. Uh, one of which is the Algorand SDK, which will be uh, interacting with your uh, web server. And then also you have the uh, Algorand blockchain itself, along with the um, uh, Algorand virtual machine uh, with smart contracts where they execute. That's the virtual environment they will execute in. So it kind of makes sense uh, to be lean and mean, right? Because you don't want to be too uh, um, bulky in terms of the execution speed. And um, that really is, is the benefit of assembly language, right? You can't get much leaner than, than that, right? When you're using programming. So, uh, you know, I'm not knocking it because uh, it, it does have its purpose in life and, and this is the case. So let's take a look at these two right here with Algorand SDK and the smart contract and uh, with uh, Beaker, and what is it? Basically, it's a uh, Python framework. And like I mentioned now, this framework is now extended into uh, type um, uh, JavaScript, TypeScript, and, uh, and C-sharp for building uh, smart contracts. It um, is using PyTeal and uh, the Py uh, Python smart contract framework improves things like your code organization, your deployment, uh, interaction, uh, debugging, and in short, it handles all the, the lifting for you, which is great. So Beaker is what you know uh, ties these together, right? The Algorand SDK. You'll see there's a lot of built-in Algorand SDK methods that are called from a higher level with fewer parameters, and then also the smart contract is the thing is going to end up affecting. Now this, I like this slide here. This is the actual uh, the application client, and I took this shot right from the repo for uh, where Beaker um, was created, the uh, the GitHub repo. And I just condensed each one of the methods. You can see there's a ton of them in there. You know, compiler, clear, create, update, opt in, uh, delete, prepare, uh, add method call, fund, um, get application state, get application account state, uh, resolve method hints, uh, get suggested params. So there's a ton of functionality built right into the application client, and that's probably the biggest benefit. Period is the application client. So I wanted to point that out right from the get go. So let's do a, a, a direct comparison, first of all, uh, between what you've seen so far today with PyTeal and with um, uh, ABI. And uh, we're gonna do our first demo uh, with this. So let me go ahead and bring up our uh, Beaker calculator example. And I've got three folders in this repo, uh, one of which is uh, the PyTeal version. And the other one here is a, um, a beaker version of the same program and then one that's deployed to test net we'll show you the difference so this is where we're going to go with this we'll start with the pi teal so here we have the the contract right that you've seen a lot here today uh, very similar right it's got the router built in uh, to, to, to handle uh, your calculator functions uh, these are some of the router methods that would hang off of that and then we have at the end it goes ahead and generates and creates the um, the code all right, so there's a router and our methods, and then we have the compile that generates the contract and improve a language, and, and we're just gonna spit each one of those out to the uh, directory. So if you take a look at the uh, directory here, and uh, you can actually see the, um, 
you know, they were all just created right now, all right, at that, at that juncture. So that's the high teal method. Now let's take a look at uh, the beaker uh, method here. So um, first of all, there's no router in here. Uh, it takes care of that for you. Uh, really all you have to do is define these external uh, methods for add, multiply, subtract, and then that's pretty much it, right? So this is going to uh, generate the, uh, the code, and here's the app client I talked about. Where that's the first thing we're going to instantiate. So let's just run this so we can hit the breakpoints. And so the very first thing it's going to do is use this calculator um, uh, PI, which is going to be uh, the application uh, is, is what it, the class it's going to inherit from. Okay, so now the calculator has everything that application does. And then uh, come down over here with the, uh, the definitions for the different functions. And now we're going to use it. So we're just going to, just by instantiating calculator itself, you have the ability to print off all of the approval, clear, and, and then uh, the JSON file. So that was pretty cool right off the get go. And then uh, now we actually get into the demo of the client that's uh, interacting with it. And so the first thing you see, there's built-in sandbox functions. Again, that's a chunk of code that you had to copy and paste in every application you built. And I understand you guys had a little bit of a headache getting going with that too, right? With the sandbox and trying to get methods and get the accounts out of the KMD files. And you don't have to do that anymore. Boom, one line does it. You got it right there, you got your client established. And then this is gonna go ahead and grab the, 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 the pop the account off of the uh, ones that are created with the sandbox. So I've got sandbox running here. So you can see the accounts there that are listed. This is a started up in dev mode and, uh, and then you're good to go. All right, so it's gonna pull one of those off and this will be your account number. You can see it right there coming up. All right, so that's that YWU guy. And then we're gonna go ahead and uh, create our application. So you got the client for the um, uh, Algo D right there. You've got the app you're passing in and then the signer, who's gonna be signing uh, this particular account. And so this will be the account uh, and you can see the signer uh, right there coming in. All right, so next up, uh, you can see the uh, create the client now. So this is gonna go ahead and create and give us the app ID and the address of the application along with the transaction ID. So these are the three things that gets returned with that. So now we'll go ahead and print that off down below so you can see it here. And then the next thing we're gonna do is just simply call those methods that you have here. And there you have it, folks. It is, how easy is that, right? In comparison to what you guys have been doing. So this is beautiful, this is a breath of fresh air. I'm, I'm a happy camper, no more assembly language for me. I could just go this way all, all the way through it, you know, so it's, it's pretty cool. All right, so let's get back uh, to the deck. And so, oh yeah, one thing I wanted to do, finish off that one with, um, take a look at the, the last one here was uh, the test net. And really the only thing I did differently here was I added a few um, um, Algo D SDK um, uh, like the atomic transaction composer for example here because I want what I want to do is uh, I'm going to create um, an account from mnemonic now you know in a in a web application of course you'd be get you know getting the um, wallet integration to get the the secret key so this is for demo purposes you guys never put mnemonics in code uh, officially said that for the recording okay and then also you have the uh, ability here to get the client once again. So all the rest is pretty much the same. I'm just replacing the account that I got from the uh, sandbox with a real account that's on testnet. And you just gotta make sure you got funds in it. And, then, and, that, and you can use the dispenser, of course, to do that. Everything else, I think, is exactly the same. And that's really it. So uh, you just gotta know what to do when uh, you are um, you know, going to testnet by just substituting those accounts. So recap then, um, bare pie teal, smart contract code is complex and you got to manually define the helper functions and you need uh, front end setup that could be lengthy as, you, as I think you've found out. With Beaker, you got smart contract organization is familiar. You've got the helper methods are already defined and there's more on the way and then it's easier to deploy and, and call the contract as you saw there. So what's the makeup of Beaker? Here we got the um, sandbox, you do, excuse me, um, you have the application class on the left along with the state 
and decorators. So that's, those are smart uh, contract related. And then also you have the application client in the middle tier, which you see here where you deploy and call the contracts and then the sandbox for, for testing. So those five pieces are really make up all the components of Beaker. Uh, to install it, you just clone it and then uh, do an install PyTeal if you haven't done that already and then install the Python Algorand SDK and then finally to uh, go ahead and install Beaker. Uh, this here is the Beaker Starter Kit. We're going to actually, I'm going to show you this here uh, as well as provide the link uh, for this to you as well. And uh, the way you do this, you just like you start up with the uh, dev uh, for the sandbox. You go ahead and create your virtual environment and then install the requirements for that. And what the Starter Kit does, uh, you'll have the starting uh, code and you're going to have completed code in another folder. So your goal is to kind of do it on your own if you can, but you do have the completed code to look and compare to, okay? So, so let's we'll start out with uh, this set here, the smart contract with the application class and state and decorators. So the application class first. So all you do is pass in um, the application class when you instantiate it, that will go ahead now and um, uh, clone that for you, for your application, inherit it from it. And you can see there you've got the, um, definition of uh, say hello a hello method where you're simply going to do a concatenation of, of uh, the name with the word hello and then uh, you can see you've got that star in the middle here that's a separator between your inputs and outputs and there you can see the uh, um, this is the you know bare class the base class that all beaker applications should inherit from and then what's included in the logic is you have uh, detects the state variables, uh, the bare methods, ABI methods, as well as internal subroutines, which is kind of cool. Uh, subclass to provide uh, basic behavior to uh, a custom application. As far as state, I know we talked a little bit today about global state and account state. So again, you have that uh, represented here with Beaker as well. Uh, with the application or global state, you can see right here, you have uh, use final for typing a construct that prevents reassigning of the variable name, and it's a good practice. But again, you can see it's, it's creating an instance of this application state value. That's how you go ahead and create it. And then uh, you specify the state characteristics here. So things like the stack type, in this case, we got its bytes. Uh, the default value, which is the value that is immutable here in bytes. Uh, whether it's static or not, and uh, a description. And there you can see the ABI file as well that gets generated as a result of it. Now in the local state, uh, th this example, what you're going to see here now, again, uh, using the final uh, keyword, and then this time you're going to be instantiating account state value. And so there you can see, you specify the state characteristics here with the stack type here set to a unit 64. Uh, default is going to come back as a int one in the description with the account state uh, storing integer values. Decorators. Uh, you see here we've got internal and external and uh, bare, bare eternals are the three things we'll talk about here. And uh, supports authorization as well to only allow certain accounts to execute methods by simply passing it in as a parameter. So for example here we've got uh, decorators um, external uh, and there's an add, add method so external means anybody can see it and then uh, exposes the methods as ABI methods and automatically uh, add to the method to the router so it takes care of all the router stuff behind the scenes. And internal, uh, it returns a teal type of u 64 it's not exposed to the API. All right, so this comes in handy if you've got to do local routines, you don't want uh, those to be public. So it's the same paradigm we use in programming between public and private, right? Uh, external, once again, you, have, uh, you can access internal methods like you have here. So you can say, okay, self uh, internal add uh, as part of one that is uh, uh, external. So now you're going to be using an internal one as part of that. So um, useful when method handles complex computation or uh, used repeatedly. So examples here with create and delete, for example, on the bare essentials. So these are like standalone uh, uh, type commands. To cr this is really the life cycle, right, for uh, application development to create, opt in, delete, update, clear state, close out. And then also, this is how you uh, handle the authorization piece. If you put it as a parameter here to authorize 
uh, the global creator redress. So only, here only the creator of the contract can call this method and uh, authorizes accounts uh, that hold certain tokens and authorized accounts opted in. So that's pretty handy too. So a recap of the smart contract piece to um, Beaker. You got an application class, that's the base class that you inherit from, very simple, and that provides all your basic functionalities. Uh, you get to the state where you can handle things like application state, account state, as well as those that are exposed to the ABI and those that are not exposed to the ABI but by the use of the internal decorator that you see over on the right. So you have the external, the internal, the bare uh, externals, and then authorization are the three pieces that belong to decorators. Make sense? So let's talk about deployment now and really uh, the, 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 these two areas, right? The application client and the sandbox. So with the sandbox, now you've got some great functions, right? So you can grab the accounts out of the sandbox. You can pop off an account and boom, you're up and running. You've got your account information ready to go with a couple lines of code. Uh, and then also you can see here, you're going to uh, you know, use the AlgoD client from the sandbox as well as getting the suggested PARMs from that client. So it all just folds right real nice. And all you got to do is imp import the Beaker, um, excuse me, from Beaker import sandbox for that. And there you can see the accounts that are done. And that'll give you your address information, your private key, your signer information as well, uh, all part as part of that. And you can see the objects there that, uh, that we printed off in that first example that we did. So on the application client, this is where you, will, you can do things like get accounts. Uh, we're going to keep that account, and then, we, then we're going to go ahead and instantiate this client, this get LLD client. And then you can see here the application client is the one that's instantiated. We're going to use the LLD client as a parameter to that. And then here's where your signer goes into, into play, all right, the third parameter for that. And uh, then we're going to go create, uh, uh, um, our, this will be the name of our, 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 our application and lots of functions like we had talked about up front. Quite a bit of code saved, you know, and average 750 lines. So that's times the number of smart contracts you write. <laughs> so that's pretty good. Uh, then we get the application client. So this is where you think, get, start utilizing some of these built-in functions, like go ahead and create, right? Go ahead and fund it, right, with the amount of money. Go ahead and opt into it or call it or execute it. and. Man, this is just so much easier and cleaner than using native SDK calls. So no more manually creating transactions or signing transactions or submitting transactions or waiting for that freaking confirmation, right? So uh, application client handles it all for you and that really just makes it all so simple. All right, so we got a demo here. Now, uh, if I were to just did like, you know, uncomment those like we saw, it just spin out uh, all the approval clear program and then also the, um, the contract file in JSON. And uh, so again, we create the application client. We're simply going to call it. And this is the simplest uh, example in the world because it's just a hello. And then we're going to go ahead and take the signer. And that's the one we're going to use for that particular account. So now that the signer has been established. And once that's done, then we come down to the, the main logic over here. And so we're going to do the create. We're going to go ahead and create this. Uh, um, and it, it deploys the, the contract out. And now you can see the uh, transaction ID and the address down here. And then uh, now we're going to invoke our method that we have defined up here, this hello method. We're simply just going to concat um, the name uh, that we, we pass in as a parameter down here. So I've got that as Russ. And then uh, return that ba result back. So that's it. That's the program. Now, like we talked about, uh, you could bring up um, that flow, right, and uh, interrogate the, you know, the, the app that you just created. So I think I've got this set up. Yep, this is good. Going to Sandbox. And then... Uh, so here it is, this is the transaction we just did. All right, so app ID 11 coming back. There's the, uh, the sender and uh, the address for the transaction. So if you take a look at the, uh, the block, you can see right there, there was the transaction we did and come back in here again for that. I just wanted to see what the um, application is. So here's the application um, information. 
with the uh, creator, uh, and then this has the actual app address so you can send and receive to it. And then if you had any kind of global state, local state, all that information, just throw up in a blo uh, that as well. Take a look at our next one here. So this next example is gonna cover things like state. Uh, so this would be a counter uh, application. So you can see here now, uh, what you have here is um, an external function. And this is we're gonna pass in uh, the, um, only the global creator is authorized to uh, use this. And then it's the increment we're gonna go ahead and have, and then um, uh, a decrement. So we got an increment function, uh, function and a decrement. And then, um, so let's go ahead and take a look at this one. There's the thunder, okay. Application state value. So this first one is a application state um, that is pertained, uh, you know, it's not, uh, um, it's, 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 it's at the application level. It's the easiest way to think about that. And it's going to be a type, in, um, type uh, uint64. And then uh, we've got a, a create a method where we're going to initialize our application state. And then you have another one here for uh, increment uh, as, as well. All right, the next example we're going to look at is regarding state. And so um, we'll take a look at all the different flavors here uh, going through this. So this is actually going right now, we're stepping through the contract um, to create this. So this is going to give us our uh, final varies. Now, I, I, if I had this uh, uncommented out static true, and I tried to change it later, it's going to fail, right? So. I just took it out for now, and then um, you can see here the different. Um, uh, now we got a dynamic application state value in the second one right here for the value called the same thing, and then we got an application blob. Uh, for, so that's application state blob, and then we come down to the um, application state value, and yeah, those are those are all our 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 our, our definitions in our state class example. And then um, now we're back in, or in, on the counter uh, again still. We're not in main, but this is going to go ahead and define all of our commands, right? To go ahead and do the create, the opt-in, uh, every one of these, all the write account blobs, read account blobs. Uh, so this is a good example. Uh, really has every flavor, I think, in state, both uh, you know, locally and uh, globally. And then finally, now we get back over to the um, the main line, right? So we instantiated our, our app, and now we're going to go ahead and just you know create the client and run with it. And uh, you know it's pretty uh, straightforward at that point when you go ahead and do the uh, application create method. And now, now that gets deployed, and now we're going to go ahead and opt in because um, you don't have to opt in unless you have a, an account right that wants to use it. That's not the creator. So, increment, and, and there it is. So there's our account state that we can print it out down below. And then uh, we're gonna go ahead and give you that uh, dynamic one right there for the state there, just stuff that's in there. And then our call to um, do this. Now this would fail if I had that uh, static value um, change because it would be trying to change it here. And it's, uh, but it's gonna work that time. And then, um, and there we go. And then so you wrote and read the message, account state and write the message uh, and make it readable. So that's it. All right, so that's the, the demo there on, um, on state. Let's go ahead and step through this now. All right, we're gonna click create our client. Uh, instantiate the signer. And now that's deployed out. So we have our uh, application ID. And the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and um, uh, fund the address so it can create the, the pool token, right? With the, and hold the balances. So these, these functions here are going to go ahead and create uh, the asset. We take a look at this. Um, 
that's the in the subroutine, right? They were calling here to do that, and this is just a straight old uh, asset create transaction right from the SDK. And uh, so now we're going to call the bootstrapping to uh, uh, create the um, pool token with both of those assets. So now uh, everything's created in our pool, and then we. Uh, uh, go to the funding part, fund the pool with some initial liquidity. So we're going to have a transaction uh, that's going to go ahead and do that from one of the, you know, accounts that we created in the um, uh, in the sandbox. And then if you did this on mainnet or or testnet, you'd have to have like an escrow account basically where you would have that set up to fund uh, fund it from. And uh, so there's the transaction with the signer for uh, A, and then the same same one for B. It's going to go ahead and take it. Uh, to that YWU address, uh, and this will be the uh, the uh, app address that uh, is is sending it uh, from that. Okay. So one's at three thousand, the other one's at three thousand. So now we're just going to print those balances out uh, for the pool, and then also for uh, the um, uh, each uh, each holder. Okay, and then uh, next step is minting the pool token. So this is where we're going to go ahead and do the mint on both A and B. And then the next uh, step will be uh, swapping uh, for A for B. So this base is, is based on the ratios that you have in the, in the, in the uh, pool. And uh, it would swap according to the ratios that you have there. You can see the current ratio right down there. And that's and then burning. We're going to go ahead and um, do another transaction and take care of that. And then uh, and now it's all done uh, with the the final uh, ratio there gets specified. So this one here is called op up. We can create our uh, application. And so now we got our new app deployed. And um, so this is uh, involving like an expensive hash. Uh, to go ahead and, and hash this particular uh, uh, event, this particular transaction. And you can see that I'm, I'm, I'm creating this local hash here. And then uh, seeing the two that I've got, the resulting hash and the, and the local hash. And you can see that it was successfully hashed here uh, uh, with uh, 10 times. All right, so let's take a look at the starter kit next. Um, okay, so there, this is a RSVP solution. The left side here is the starting uh, starter kit, and the right is the completed code. So this is what you'll be looking at when you do this, uh, the beaker um, interaction. And there's a lot of different um, solutions in here. This is the uh, RSVP, so you got a contract, basic contract, you've got another one for RSVP, another one for interacting, uh, basically. So you start right through with a, a contract basic first and go through all of these and then uh, continue down to the end. So these two at the end are kind of like your, your um, it's like a completed solution here, you know, based on this. And so what you'll see here is when you, in the starting, you'll have a lot of to-dos in there. And so there would be create account. So, you know, what do you, what kind, what do you put here to uh, create an account? And so it'd be, you know, you want an account pop up, right? So that sort of thing is what you'll do. So I'm just going to go ahead and run this and see the flow at least so you can kind of get the idea. All right, so we're going to go have, uh, again, we're used to the final uh, keyword. And then uh, we're going to go ahead and assign our, our contract address minimum balance. We're going to send it to 100 uh, micro uh, algos, 100,000 micro algos. And then you can see the fee there, and then also the payment transaction now. So the, you're going to get, let the transaction sender RSVP to the event by opting into the contract. Go ahead and read the price. Uh, read the amount of the RSV event. So a lot of times you'll have a stake in the game for people to go ahead and reply to it. And then uh, the rest of this is, uh, you know, pretty straightforward in terms of getting the uh, accounts uh, created. And, um, and there's our, you know, create an instance of the, the contract that we just uh, uh, have and there's the signer for it. And then uh, go ahead and create this um, 
so you can see down below there's the uh, information for the transaction. Event price is set to, and then you pull back the uh, event price uh, field, micro algos, and then you can see it down there, and then also the uh, fund it now. So this is going to take it from uh, your account, and then it's going to go ahead and fund that particular um, uh, contract. And then you see we've got guest one scenario, guest one uh, set up the, the application client. So that account would be uh, uh, signing it. And then you can see down below, we've got the uh, guest account uh, is on the second one. So that's a couple different signings by different uh, uh, participants. Then you opt into the contract uh, for the local state. And then uh, check into the event as well over here. So now we got check in uh, available. And so it should be one, and the state is one, so that's good. And number of people that should be uh, RSVPing is one, and so that's good. So now we got guests two with two scenarios. And you can see we got the uh, signer, the transaction, opt in for guest two. And so we got the state it should be zero, and it is. Come back with the balance on the account. And two is canceling the registration, so we're going to close that out. And then you can see the uh, successfully closed out. So uh, over the top of that with the number of people and a withdraw and delete scenario. And there it is. So now it's been um, uh, successfully uh, deleted the RSVB contract. So that gives you a, a, a lot of moving parts there, a little bit more of a flow for an application, but the different things you can try uh, with based on the state. So now we'll uh, go over to um, the last demo for this section. And this is, you know, we've been saving this for Crescendo. We know you guys are JavaScript, you know, and uh, that's the Beaker TS. So here we go. I'm going to look at uh, our, let's look at hello first here. So we've got our index um, um, file here, the TS file. So this is how you can do it in, in JavaScript. And then you can see here I've got the um, application client right from the sandbox. And then here's our signer we're going to pass in and the address as the sender. And uh, so this is going to then generate um, this client. So this is like the application client, right? So that's what it's doing. You can see the approval program and, and the clear program specified in there, uh, ABI methods and so forth. So that's pretty cool. And then we'll go ahead and NPM. Okay, and there it is. So that creates our, our address, and there's your hello beaker. So that's the equivalent of what we've been showing you before for the whole world, but now that's in TypeScript. All right, so let's wrap this up then. Uh, basically, um, uh, any new developers that come on, you definitely want to turn them on to our developer portal, number one. Number two, have them sign up on Discord. You guys are both on Discord, right? And um, that's really the great source of support. And it's really a very good uh, community up there. I think we're over 10,000 developers. So all these examples are, are in this deck. I've got all these repos, right? We started out with the calculator. The beaker has a lot of good examples itself. Uh, we looked at the starter kit for the RSVP solution. And then uh, the beaker TS, we saw, you saw the TypeScript on that with a new enhancement coming your way. The PowerPoint is for this and that's it. So, you know, with Beaker, uh, we saw some uh, really cool things on how uh, to build things uh, faster, quicker, easier. A lot of smart contract report uh, support with uh, uh, support for uh, global, local uh, variables as well as state. And then also we got the deployment with um, Interact and, and interacting with the, uh, the client that you're creating. So. A lot of good stuff there, and um, more good things to come ahead. Thank you very much. Yay, the crowd goes wild. Yay.
<laughs> thank you, thank you very much.